Oh no, do you see what is under there? That is old artwork. Uh, we also have some old scrapbooks, a letter jacket, photos, books, the things that would have hung us up in the past, but we don't have to worry anymore because we have a new tool, we have a game plan, and it works so well. I'm excited to share it with you today. Well, I'm back in my childhood bedroom again. We've turned this into a series because I didn't want to blow past how difficult some of these things can be. So whether you are dealing with things that you have inherited from parents and grandparents, your own, this is my own sentimental stuff, things of your kids, I am so excited to share with you today the idea of the legacy list. If you are not familiar with this, it comes from Matt Paxton's book, Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff. I've been able to go through this with lots of women now, and it is so helpful. So we have a game plan. So we're going to talk about the legacy list. I'm going to, I am committed to getting through all of these sentimental and memory items in my room. I mean, we're going to go through it together. I'm going to show you step by step, but also there are some other tips in here. Some things I've never considered before that make all the difference. So I don't think sentimental stuff is like all the other clutter in your home. And sometimes I maybe have implied that we treat it the same way or I haven't had good tools to offer you. So my apologies about that. Uh, this is gonna go much better, much smoother. You are gonna feel so confident as you work through these memory items. So let's get started working. Okay, so like I said, this has kind of turned into a series, so I will link to the other videos, but all those videos, um, I think, help lead up to this point, and I've just been working on pulling out all the old artwork um, from underneath the bed here, because if we can deal with this, then uh, this room is going to be in really good shape, and I'll give you an update kind of where we're at with everything. But let's talk about this idea actually of the legacy list because this is totally changing how I'm filtering these kinds of items. So now again, you know Matt Paxton, most likely from the show Hoarders. He was the host for, I believe, 13 years. And then he went on to create a new show um, called Legacy List with Matt Paxton. And he helps people go through their estates, whether people are going through their own estates and their retirement age and older, or for those who have inherited items. So he has tons of experience with this. And that's why he's so trustworthy um, in this area. He says, I named my show Legacy List with Matt Paxton for a reason. Establishing and passing on a legacy of memory packed items is a way of keeping ourselves and loved ones alive when we're apart. What you'll need to do here is change your mindset from one of getting rid of stuff to selecting the few legacy list items that will enhance your life today and best relay who you are to the next generation. Ask yourself, what are the items that will help me live happily and keep my story living on forever? I know that's not an easy shift, but it's indispensable. The idea of a legacy list can be your guiding star to help you know what to retain while you're decluttering, downsizing, and moving. So again, I'm going through like all my childhood memories, and now I'm using this as my lens. What items do I want to pass on to my kids that really convey who I am, what I'm passionate about, what I've cared about, how I got to be who I am today. So that's the lens that I'm using. Matt goes on to say that a great legacy item is one that helps keep people and their memories alive long after they're gone from our lives. Remember that an item's value lies not in the item itself. The item is just the vehicle for remembering someone you love and how they made you feel. That's why good legacy items are rarely the most financially valuable items. They're ones that are emotionally valuable. Your choices should echo this understanding. So if you're in a season of life like this where you're going through things you have inherited, helping parents downsize, or working on your own legacy list, I think this book definitely worth getting. It's so enjoyable to read. Um, and there's just so much other valuable information in here. So what has been stuffed under our bed for 20 years now are is both my artwork and Diana's artwork, both from high school and we both took like some classes in college too. And so I feel confident to go through my own. I don't necessarily want to make those decisions for her, but luckily underneath the bed was a nice art portfolio. So I'm going to clean that up, put Diana's stuff in there, if there's some clearly obvious things, like this was hers and I know she wouldn't care to keep this. If there's some obvious things, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take care of these myself. I'm not gonna ask her or put it in her portfolio, but there are a handful of things that I, I want her to make that decision on. But now I'm, I'm looking at all of this stuff here and I'm using this lens of the legacy list. And so I'm asking myself, is any of this stuff cool enough, important enough, special enough? Does it 
communicate who I am enough to make my legacy list. And Matt suggests having about five items, five things on your legacy list. Like we're not looking for tons and tons of things here. And so if I'm looking at that number, that small of a number of things, I'm, I'm already looking at this stuff through the lens that most of it is going to go. And instead of that feeling restrictive or sad, that actually feels very freeing to me, having this permission to let go of stuff that, yes, while it was part of like, of my, my childhood and has, I mean, I don't know, some of this stuff is kind of fun. It got me to where I am today. Like, I do think it shows some of my creativity that led to me um, being here today. I mean, it's kind of fun, right? I'm like definitely going down memory lane as I'm looking at this. But are these things so special that I'm going to archive them and curate them as part of my legacy list? Honestly, most of them, probably not. Now, another tactic that Matt uses that I really appreciate and have sometimes uh, put down in the past is that he says it's okay to have a maybe pile. So when he's sorting through heirlooms and sentimental items, he says you should have three piles. Uh, keep, like definitely we're going to keep this, a maybe pile. This can be important. And then a donate, trash, sell, get rid of pile. So all this stuff that's going to leave. And often we advise against maybe piles because we feel like we're just deferring decisions that it's way too easy to put stuff into a maybe pile. But it's much different when you're going through with kitchen items or clothes, things that you can pretty easily replace compared to one of a kind of pieces of artwork that you made in ninth grade. So I think especially when you're working through these types of items, having a maybe pile helps you to make decisions so much more quickly. Quickly. And so here I am creating a trash pile and then I have a pile of stuff for Diana that I'm going to put in her portfolio for her to go through and then I have a maybe pile for myself and actually I think of a few like as I'm looking at the maybe pile now there's probably just a few things in there that if I could tell the story and get it out or take a picture of the items that I'm definitely not going to need to keep the actual physical item and so why don't we take a minute I'll show you kind of where I ended up with each of these piles. And today's video is sponsored by Helix, where they're still celebrating the 4th of July with a huge sale. Right now, you can get 30% off their Lux and Elite mattress lines and two free pillows, or take 25% off site-wide during their 4th of July sale, but it's just for a limited time. So if you've been following us, we've been wanting Helix mattresses everywhere. We've had our Helix mattress at home for three years now. We love it, we sleep great on it, and we recommend it to everyone we know. So my parents have one, my grandma, many of our friends have upgraded as well, because we trust that you're gonna get paired with an awesome mattress and get a really good night's sleep. Helix Sleep makes it so easy. You just go online and take their sleep quiz. You answer some questions like, what position do you normally sleep in? So for Tom and I, we're side and stomach sleepers. Do you ever wake up with back pain? Oh no, did you know? You shouldn't wake up with back pain. <laughs> what firmness do you prefer? We prefer our mattress a little more on the firm side. And do you ever get too warm at night too? Because they have their unique glacial cooling cover that helps keep you just the right temperature at night as well. So we took the quiz and we were matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. And like I said, we've had it for multiple years and we don't wake up with sore backs. We sleep well through the night, wake up feeling rested and refreshed for the next day. And again, if we're gonna be decluttering, you need to feel well rested. You need to feel like you're making good decisions, right? And it helps to be in a good mood too. So I feel like everyone in our household has benefited from us having a really great mattress. So not only do they make it easy to get matched with your perfect mattress, then it comes delivered right to your door. Conveniently rolled up in a box, shipping is included in the US, and then you get 100 nights to test it out, over three months to make sure it's just the right fit for you. And beyond that, they also have a 10 year warranty and you'll also sleep soundly at night knowing that your mattress is fiberglass free. And of course, now is the best time to do it during their 4th of July sale. So again, that's 30% off their Elite and Luxe mattresses plus two free pillows or take 25% off site-wide, but it's just for a limited time during their 4th of July sale. So be sure to click on our link down below, helixsleep.com backslash minimal mom. All right, so it's all decided. We're all gonna get a good night's sleep and that will help us, uh, again, as we're trying to figure out what goes on our legacy list. <laughs> Let me show you what we've pared it down to. Okay, so here are the three piles. This is the trash pile. So it's uh, it's actually pretty sizable, um, which is fine. That was our goal, right? Like we knew most of it was going to go. And then this is Diana's pile. This is, she is like super creative. Like she's parachuting over a scene. Can you see how it looks like Diana too? So thank you for indulging me while I share some of my maybe items real quick. I think it'll help provide clarity. So this one is funny. I don't remember what the assignment was, but I think it was to do some kind of juxtaposition. It's big. It's kind of bulky. I don't want to keep it uh, long term. 
this one I, I wouldn't normally keep. I did this in high school, like a self-portrait. It's just okay, <laughs> right? But um, Adeline's actually been doing a lot of portraits. She's much more skilled than I am. And so I think it'd be fun to show her one that I did. And, uh, but again, I don't need to keep it. I think it'd be fun to show it to her and then it can go like, it's, it's not that special to me. Again, I wish I could remember what the assignment exactly was, but I know, uh, I think we had to come up with a new product. So this was spray peanut butter, <laughs> which I don't know, that's kind of clever, right? And then here was like some kind of ad that I made for it with some existing things. So again, I don't think I need to keep these actual pieces, but it would be fun just to take a photo of it to have. And I think then that kind of represents just some of what I did to get here. So I think just taking some photos of that stuff. And then this was a painting I had done too that I just always thought was kind of cool. So I might hang on to this as one piece that I actually would keep. It's like, it's a little bit nicer. It's on a canvas and everything. So for now, I am going to hang on to this. But as we go through other stuff, that could evolve. And I'm I'm really open-minded about that. But I don't have to be hasty about just getting rid of stuff right now. So that's the stuff I'm going to keep. This stuff is all going to go into a black trash bag and move on out of here. I don't want to even be tempted to second guess things because I feel good about the things I'm keeping. And I had I had completely forgotten about all that other stuff. So it's okay. I'm just going to move it out and I will not probably ever, ever think about it again. Oh, and good news. Underneath the bed is clear now. Well, except for a lot of dust, but we'll vacuum and clean that up later. Also, I did want to mention that in one of the previous videos I did in here, I showed my porcelain doll collection and um, a, a friend reached out and said, hey, like I would gladly take the porcelain dolls. I don't remember exactly what they do with them, but they have a way of using them for others. And so I said, they are yours. And so <laughs> I boxed them up over a year ago <laughs> to go and they just never got out. So that's where those are going to go. And again, I considered those for my legacy list. Like, are any of those something that I want to include on my legacy list? I'm looking at legacy list through the lens of like, how did I get to be who I am today? What's most important to me? What do I want people to remember me by? Tell stories of me. And while those porcelain dolls were special to me when I was a child, my kids have no value for them. I don't really have stories. I have a few stories of like Christmases and stuff getting them, but I have pictures of those and it's just not a part of who I am. And so while it was a happy part of my childhood, I don't need to keep them. And that's how I feel about my stuffed animals too. Now, that might be different. I do have one stuffed animal that I did hang on to. So that might be different for each of us and that's totally okay. But for me, they they definitely, when I, again, when I'm looking through everything through the lens of a legacy list, they don't make the cut and that's okay. And I feel good about that. Like I really do. I feel like that's okay. I enjoyed them for a season and now I can move on from that and it is okay. So those are going to a new home and it feels really good to get them out of here because I felt guilty that they were just stored under the bed, getting super dusty. No one was using them or appreciating them. It was just, it was hanging over my head. So I feel a lot better knowing they're going to someone else that can actually appreciate them. Okay, so I've been talking about all the stuff I'm not keeping and what's not making my legacy list, but let's talk about a few things that absolutely are going to make my list. And then also I do want to talk about yearbooks, letter jackets, and prom dresses too because they're all in here as well. So my parents have been so kind to let us store our memories here for so long, but it's been over 20 years since we graduated high school, so I think it's time um, to process all this stuff. So one year for Christmas, uh, Diana and I both got, Diana and I would usually get like the same Christmas presents from relatives, but I believe it was our godmother that gave us each a scrapbooking kit. I think she got them from Sam's Club and it was such a great gift because we actually did the scrapbooks and I noticed even as I was opening the box here that, I don't know if you can tell, um, there's tons of like little memory items in here too. There are um, like little loose photos and ticket stubs. I cannot believe this isn't here. Okay. I have to tell the story <laughs> of this and then we'll talk about scrapbooks. <laughs> so we had to come up with an invention for one of our classes. And so I came up with the fly tie, which was a way to keep zippers up on jeans that come down on their own. And all it was, was, um, a paper clip twisted that it actually does work like it's functional i did have a pair of jeans where the zipper would always come down i got a little container from nails i made this little wrapper to go around it i put as seen on tv 
on it and made it and um <laughs> like even put like a barcode on the back and I thought it was so clever um so this is so fun and again things that like represent my creativity or, or whatnot <laughs> entrepreneurial spirit you could tell this like made me smile when I saw it so yes I want to keep this and I you know I have such a, a love-hate relationship with scrapbooks because I know many feel so much guilt about unfinished scrapbooks but I don't feel any negative feelings even at the thought of going through this right now because even though there's clearly stuff next to it that never actually got scrapbooked like into pages there are so many great memories in here and I love that within this book it's actually like really a pretty small package right like so much of this represents all of my middle school and high school years um like there's band programs in here pictures that was our 16th birthday party so so many great things in here wow there's so much stuff in here again that just was not even scrapbooked but it's like programs and that kind of stuff I think that's cool like this program um our senior year I had a solo in it with my French horn so that's like that's cool um great memories and this will absolutely make my legacy list having this um scrapbook so some pages are oh this is so funny okay so this like we scrapbooked like a lot of the the pages so this was Christmas 1998 look even then up until then I still that picture is of me getting a porcelain doll, right? So I have photos with them. I don't need to keep the actual dolls. This is so fun. Like this would be so fun to go through with the kids. Now I've never gone through this with our kids and speaking of French horn, huh? Yeah, check that out. <laughs> so we got to go on a trip to Washington DC for band and play. So that's kind of cool. I will stop now, but I, I think like, I think this is a great legacy list item. It really tells the story of middle school and high school. And so this makes the list and I'm really grateful for that. I am looking though. I just saw um, one of my uh, 4-H ribbons. There is, I do have one champion. It was like a room design project, like an interior design project. So I got champion at the county level. So I got to go to the state fair and then got champion at the state fair too. So I know those ribbons are around here, but those will definitely be part of my legacy list as well. Okay. So anyways, yes, I will keep the, the scrapbooks. I have a couple others here too, and they don't take up a lot of space. I'm gonna find a good like safe container to put them in. Ideally, we wanna also have this curated in a safe way that is protected and we don't have to worry about it. And it really is like a fun thing. I, wow, again, thank you for indulging me. This was like, it was kind of fun, so. Okay, uh, real quick, we can talk about yearbooks here's what's so funny okay you could tell how much like this excited me and i'm really grateful for it and again even if you have partially completed scrapbooks but you have like all the little things you were going to scrap out that's fine they actually make really nice boxes now you can get them on amazon or wherever they're acid free and all the that but you can just put everything into it so even if you never completed all of the pages that's okay throw it all in a box the photos the ticket stubs whatever and that is still something cool to have. This is not finished or complete, does not matter. Okay, yearbooks. So what I was saying, this excited me, right? Like you could tell, clear yes, that goes on my legacy list. And then I saw these. So these are two yearbooks. These were from middle school, right? We had the hardcover ones in high school. These are middle school. Just seeing these, I felt a stress yuck feeling of just like, man, I yearbooks stress me out because you like go around and get people to sign them and you want everyone to sign them and they're like well, I want some of the cool kids to sign them but I'm not cool we weren't cool in middle school and high school totally fine I'm I'm grateful for it now but made me who I am today we were not cool though um and like oh could I get that person to sign it and all that T to me this just represents stress worrying about fitting in just I didn't like middle school that much Mom, it had nothing to do with you. You did a great job, but no, who does, right? Um, and so these, I will gladly let these go. Gross. I don't need to see these. So I'm happy just to throw these away. And you can do that. You can keep them. They can be part of your legacy list or in your memory box. Totally fine. Or what some friends have done too is they just pull out certain pages from it. If there's some pages in there, maybe some things someone wrote that you want to keep. You know, there are things written on the cover too. You could just keep the cover. So we have a few different options. You can keep them, you can totally get rid of them, or you can select a few pages to keep. I think those are all great options and you have permission to do any of them. But honestly, if I never see these again, it'll be totally fine, totally fine. And 
most every school now has their yearbooks online too. So if you really want to go back and see your photo, you can just go online and retrieve it. So I've shared before, this was my bedroom. So it had a lot of my stuff. And then Diana moved back home uh, after college. And then she lived in here for a few years, I think. So then she accumulated stuff and more stuff came in. And then she moved out and then no one was in here. So then stuff just got put in here. And so I actually FaceTimed with Diana and I held up stuff and asked her if it was okay to get rid of it. Oh, hey. Hello. I was just saying, this is not my stuff behind here. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we do when we want to declutter stuff we're not sure if someone else would want? We put them on FaceTime. Say hi, Diana. <laughs> Hello. And we're going to go through um, this stuff. So what I did, Diana, I have a small box here for books that you want to keep. And then okay. um, I also have like a keepsake box for some of this stuff that's like a little bit sentimental that I don't know if it's yours. So I'm going to put it in here for you and then you can go through that at a different time. Okay. Are we really doing this? <laughs> yeah. Diana's like horrified right now. Well, <laughs> what would you like to say about this, Diana? No, honestly, I mean, that's just like a different life now, right? Yeah. And so like, it's all, it all was so meaningful. And so I don't even know what's there or what is still meaningful or yeah. what's there. I don't know. <laughs> well, should we show you? All right. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to flip around here. Books, some dishes, pottery, jewelry. Yeah, those were made for me. Okay. So do you want to keep those like into the special keepsake box or have they? Um, <laughs> Are you worried someone might see this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll put them in the special keep box. Um, but I'm thinking like most of this jewelry like is not yeah, stuff, not. except for the charm bracelet that I made you. Or oh, not? Yes, or not? I don't. I'm not gonna force you to keep anything. Actually, this wasn't the bracelet. This was the second one. This was a replacement. Oh. So I made Diana a charm bracelet, but this isn't it when Adeline was born. Um, but we don't know what happened to the bracelet. And then I made a necklace, I think, when Maggie was born. So, or one of the boys, I don't know. So I don't even know if this one was meaningful because it's not the original. Exactly. Yeah, we can let that go. Okay. This is hard. Yeah, you're telling me. You're not even, you're just sitting there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So, I, like, what? You can open it. I don't even want to know. Okay, so let the white box go, this box? Just let it go. Okay. Because yeah. that's all, that's... Memories from a certain season? <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I think there's just only a few select things here that I would want to take with me into the future. Yeah. You know? Wallet? I don't think so. Okay, donation. Um, this box? Okay, that is from, that I need for sure. That Princeton gave me when we were dating. It was like one of the first gifts he gave me. It's from India. It looked like, I kind of wondered. Okay, so that's going in the keepsake box. And if you're unsure about something, we'll just put it in there, right? Yeah, if you can bring it to me. This is an empty journal, so that we don't need, right? Oh, no. Oh. All right. That was a much simpler time in life, clearly. Right. Oh, is that Melanie Dobson? Yes. Okay, we got it. Super good. All right, that's going in the keep box. Um, like this is all garbage. This is like jewelry. I don't think you. Yeah, let it go. Care about? Do you remember what this was from? No, it's like opening a new present. Oh, nothing in it. <laughs> it's empty. We'll let that go. Okay. Frame picture of the girls. I'll just take the picture out and uh, right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So this isn't actually that hard. This is a lot easier not being there, like touching it and feeling it myself, I feel like. I think you're fortunate to have a sister do this for you. Um, what was this from? I got the bouquet. Uh, did you actually get married right after? Yeah. How soon after? Oh, I mean the next, well, the next summer. Oh, so there is something to catch in the bouquet. Okay, but you don't need this anymore, right? No, I got okay. the man. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you have the evidence. <laughs> Um, perfume bottle? No, that's old. Yeah, I mean, some random jewelry, I can't no. imagine. No, let it go. Okay, and that we're going to let go. <laughs> See, that... that... Is years old. Okay, so this is good. I can take care of that then. Are there books here that you know? 
Um, that's a little trickier. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you need to go through the books? Yeah, books are so hard. I don't use paper books anymore, but there's some good ones in there. You're really going to hold up my progress if you have to. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I, keep, I just keep those handful of books that were super meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And I think I've already pulled them out of that. I know. Of that room. Right. So I think they can all be boxed up. I'll, when I'm going through them, if I see any that I think are like, they might be questionable, I'll just let you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I do feel like, and if, honestly, if I haven't come back and grabbed them over the That's the past, thing, right? You know. Six years. Yeah. Do you have any others of this author, the Melanie whatever? There should be a few on that other big book. Okay, show. so I'll look for these. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And I see, like, this was actually um, from our childhood. So, like, I'll keep um, that. Like, that can stay in here. So, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I think what I'm going to do, Diana, I'm going to take a picture of each of the shelves and send it and I text it to you. Just glance through it. If there's any other books you want me to keep, just text me back and I'll keep those ones. I'll pull those ones out. Otherwise, I'm going to box them up. You are a gem. Because somebody should be using these books, right? Not letting them rot away on yeah. shelves. Because <laughs> they are good ones. They really are. So Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're amazing. Thank you. Well, it's not me. Everyone was like, hey, that was fun seeing your childhood room. We'd love to see the before and afters of it decluttered. And I'm like, darn it, now I have to go back and actually do it. <laughs> what are we going to do with this room? Well, I think it actually could be like a guest room, you know? Yeah. So we'll see if we can get it shaped up and get it back to a functional room again and not a shrine to Diana's past. <laughs> a shrine to my 20s. Like, right? who needs that? <laughs> yeah, ain't none of us need that, right? Awesome. Do you want your clarinet or can I donate it back to our band? It from oh, please let it go <laughs> to a really, really needy Fifth grader? Make beautiful music with it, yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. All right. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much all I needed to ask you and I think I'm gonna get busy then. Awesome, thank you. All right, say goodbye. All right, see you soon. All right, so that actually went pretty easily. She could actually see it, I think, pretty well um, through FaceTime. So I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna throw away the stuff. I have a donation box and a garbage bag. So anything donatable, I'll throw in the donation box. Everything else is gonna go in the trash and we're gonna get this shaped up real quick. I did tell her to send her some photos of the book, so I'm gonna do that really quick. Like she said though, I mean, she has already pulled out books that she wanted from here, so most likely she's not missing any of these. And so remember, often we need to invite others into the process, either to physically help us move stuff, or to tell the stories, or because it's their stuff and they need to tell us what to do with it. And plan short sessions. We don't wanna overwhelm ourselves or the other person, but remember that we can do this virtually. Okay, so I have Diana's little keepsake box here. There's not too much, um, just this jewelry box she said to keep. And then this is a little locket that I'd given her that has pictures of the girls inside. So I'm gonna have a, keep that for her. But I did just notice um, there is a box here that has like cards and different things. Um, so I'm gonna make a quick pass through it because it also looks like there's things that aren't important in it. So I'm going to make a quick pass through and put anything that I'm just not sure about into the box and then she can go through it at a different time. Okay, so we got all that paired down to a nice little box here and I think pretty much everything that is like sentimental um, we pretty much have in here. I might find a couple more things on the shelves, but we got a little more room if we need to add. But isn't this so nice just being able to give her this one contained box. I'm going to label it and then if she wants to go through it, she can. Otherwise, she can just set it aside for another time when she might have a little more bandwidth to go through it. It's me nice and contained and all that. All right, let's get these books taken care of. Okay, I have to make the boxes of books not too heavy though, <laughs> right? And Matt also suggests if you're gonna go through more sentimental items with other people in your family, or maybe you have a parent or grandparent and they want to talk through some of the stuff, you can actually do a family Zoom and record it and record your family member sharing the stories and telling about the item. Often then if we have that recording, we don't have to keep the item. We can let the item go. The stories are preserved, but how special to hear the person describing it in their own voice. I think that if I had my grandma Adeline just talking through some of the memories of some of the stuff from her house, it'd be cool to see the items and what she had to say, but just to hear her voice again, darn it, I want to get emotional.
that would be so special. You know, my relationship with her was in a time where we didn't have cell phones and video cameras at our disposal all the time. To hear her voice again would be so cool. I would love that so much, right? So we can use this technology that we have and all these devices right at our disposal to record the stories. Again, we don't want to go overboard. That's still inventory, even on your phone that you have to manage, but to have a few videos of special people to us talking through special items, I think that would be a pure gold. Okay, it's actually astonishing to me how much fit on that little bookshelf because I have two boxes almost full of books. I have Diana's keepsake box and this garbage bag is like two thirds full. All on that little bookshelf. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? All right, I'm gonna get it dusted off. I'm really glad I have you all for accountability because this is a lot more work than I was thinking that it was gonna be. <laughs> Okay. Wow. I am already starting to feel a little overwhelmed <laughs> again. And I feel like I had a good grip on this room, but it, you know, telling the stories and stuff, it kind of takes a lot out of you. So a couple tips when we start to just like sense like, Ooh, it's getting to be a lot. Uh, take a break. So short sessions are usually key with items that are emotionally charged. And then another option is just moving to sorting and categorizing stuff. So again, there's still a fair amount of stuff in here. Some of it is just storage that my mom has stored up here because she can because it's her house, right? Other things are Diana's non-sentimental stuff, but just stuff that was left over. And so I'm going to start grouping um, those different categories of stuff. So I'll have a pile for my mom to go through, a pile of stuff that's going to go to Diana's. We've already let Diana know that she gets the gift of all of her stuff back. So <laughs> she's expecting it. Um, we're like, you can come here. We could go through it together. We could bring it to you. She's like, just bring it to me. It's fine. Um, so we're going to do that. And I think working on that for a little bit will help me feel re-energized because what I'm really excited about is not only is two things. One, knowing my memories are safe and they're not kind of strewn about and just under the bed getting all dusty, but also turning this room back into a functional guest room for my mom. This is a beautiful bedroom. My dad and I made it over um, when I was in high school, so I have lots of good memories in here. Prior to that, it was just a storage room and Diana and I shared a room and my brother had a room. But then I was just like, hey, let's turn that room into a bedroom. And so we cleaned it out and we tore out the plaster and we put up sheetrock. And so it was a ton of work, but it was fun. And I picked out the paint colors and everything. Have you noticed something about this room? You know how our bedroom at home has three doors in it, including an exterior door? Yeah, <laughs> this does too. So this exterior door goes to this cute little porch up here. Um, but anyways, I just thought it was ironic that my bedroom growing up had three doors in it as well. So anyways, um, but I'm excited to turn it back into a guest room because it's just, it's a beautiful space. It's a, it's a really nice and spacious and, and relaxing room. And so that is what we are gonna do together in the next video because I have some fun new things. We'll make sure everything is moved out and put in a little bit of decor. I have a couple just things I'm really excited about in here. So that helps to keep me going too when I imagine what I want this space to be and how it's going to feel and function once all of this stuff is out. So I totally understand getting overwhelmed by it, but we keep pushing through because it just feels so good when it's done, right? All right, I'm not sure if you can tell like how much better this looks right now. Like it just feels better because it's categorized. So there wasn't actually, my mom didn't actually have that much stuff in here. Um, and then again, this is all Diana's stuff. The bookshelf will, that my grandpa made so that, that's like a thing that'll stay here, but everything else on it is hers. <laughs> so uh, it's just a lot. But truly, as I got going into it, I was finding more just like empty boxes, clear donations, stuff we didn't need anymore. Um, a couple bags of my mom's summer clothes that I want her to go through, so I just pulled those out. So it, even like how much we were able to reduce the inventory, even though I'm like, I'm not making any decisions, right? So this just, it feels very good and very manageable again. So I am glad for that. So if you ever start feeling overwhelmed, remember, we can just work on categorizing and we don't have to make any decisions. All right, now all three of our letter jackets, my sister, brother, and I are shoved in this closet. Um, graduation robes, prom dresses. So again, if we're looking through the lens of creating a legacy list, does this represent me, who I've been, who I've become, how I got to where I am? No. Graduation robes, we all have pictures of that, right? I see, unless you want to use that as like a Halloween costume or something, I think there's absolutely no reason to keep those. Again, you do you, that's fine. Prom dresses, I've kind of gone back and forth. I'm like, oh, would our girls like to someday dress up and then wear them? My prom dresses were real lame. Like there was nothing that cool or special about, they were black, ironically, right? Both years I went to prom. 
they were just black dresses. There wasn't anything like, they're not, they wouldn't be fun to dress up in or anything like that, right? So I'm okay not keeping those. And then the letter jackets, that would be the one thing that I was kind of going back and forth on. It was pretty cool when we earned our letters and, and actually got the jackets, but it's also kind of bulky. And so I've decided that I would like to just take off the patches, donate the jacket, I don't need the full jacket, but the patches are pretty cool and then I can put them with my scrapbook stuff. So that's what I've decided to do with the letter jacket. But again, if you think like, wow, that really represents like high school to me, I'm going to keep it. I think that's cool. If that's part of your legacy list, that's awesome. Keep it. But if you're like, meh, it's not that special, then let's not even like waver over it or go back and forth. Um, if it's not so special that would make your legacy list, it's probably okay to let it go and to move on from it. Also, I guess my wedding dress isn't here, but both Diana and I did decide to keep our wedding dresses. So again, I think there's great options. We can keep it. I think my girls might want to try it on sometime and my dresses, Diana paid to have it like put in the box and everything. So that's fine. So it's safe now. So we can keep it. We can donate it to those some really great causes where you make angel gowns or other things. Or there's also some clever things on Pinterest and Etsy where you could turn it into a Christmas tree ornament or a pillow. Do something smaller with it so you still have a piece of it, but you don't need the whole dress. But again, that's a, it just depends on how special it is to you. For many of us, we have lots of photos of it, probably the most photos we ever have of any other dress we've ever worn. And so for many of us, that will suffice and you have permission to let it go. Or you might think, hey, who knows? Maybe my kids will want to try it on someday. So I'm going to hang on to it. I would love to know what you decided to do, do with your wedding dress. I think it's pretty 50-50 whenever I talk to other women, what they actually do with their dresses. Oh, did you know? I know what you're going to ask about next. Mm -hmm. What about photos? <laughs> the, the, the photo question always comes up. The photo question is the worst. Um, just because there's not a quick and easy answer. Luckily, uh, in Matt's book, he does talk about photos. So it gives a great guide jumping off point. Depending on how many photos that you have to process, you might need some more support around it. I mean, we did, uh, I think it's over 10 hours now, physical photo camp um, in our mentorship group where together we were processing and scanning and decluttering and all that. Um, so I think if you can find a group of people to help you, there are professional archival services too that will handle it for you. Miss Freddie, she has some great solutions on her site for both physical photos and digital photos where you take a course and then you systematically work through everything. All I'm getting at is there's not just a simple, oh, do this, this, and this, and then your photos are taken care of. There's a lot of nuances to it and it's just a big project. So we always recommend getting the rest of your house decluttered first and then save that to towards the end where you can just know it's going to take multiple hours. You're going to have to spread them out and you can create a plan to tackle them. Now, one other option that I didn't mention is that you can decide that you don't want to be the family historian. Often we volunteer, especially when a loved one has passed away and we're in kind of an emotional state. No one else is volunteering. So we say, okay, fine. I will take all the photos. I will sort them. I will scan them in. I'll get CDs to everyone or upload them somewhere upline where people can access them. All these great ideas that we have but it takes hours and hours and hours of your life. So if it has been hanging over you like this huge weight on your head because you volunteered to be that family historian and now you don't want to do it anymore, that's okay. You can text or call all your family members and say, hey, I had really good intentions when I took on this project, but I'm not actually gonna be able to complete it. Would somebody else like to do it? And if no one does, you could say, okay, well, no one else is volunteering. Um, should we pay someone to do it? Here's what it would cost. And a quick Google search, you can find people in your area or online um, that can help with this. And I can put some resources below as well. Okay, here's what the cost would be based on the number of photos we have. Do we all wanna split the cost? Does somebody wanna volunteer to pay it? And that just gives you more information to work with. And it's still no one wants to pay for it. They don't want to volunteer. Well, then ultimately you decide what you want to do with the photos and maybe they'll just stay in boxes and bins and it just is what it is. So again, I know what a huge weight this can be and I wish that there was a simpler solution, but unfortunately with all of the women I've worked with, worked with all the brainstorming we've done, all the working together, <laughs> there's just no way to shortcut the process. All right, well, I'm going to end here for today. I will link to the other videos that we have done. I hope you find this helpful. I would love to know what has helped you. Do you have any books or resources that have been really helpful for you? Your ideas and experiences are just pure gold, and I'm so grateful when you share those in the comments. There's so many great 
discussions that go on in the comments and I know a lot of friends that look there for resources as well. So thank you in advance for checking that out. And if you haven't done so, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that just helps more people find out about our channel as well. And um, many could use help in this area, right? All right. Well, thank you for spending this time with me today. Thank you for letting me tell my stories. I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.